Right now, something impossible is happening beneath the streets of Naples. The ground is rising. Ancient Roman columns that once stood at sea level now tower above dry land. Mollusks fossilized halfway up their stone faces. Over half a million people are living on top of a supervolcano that is waking up in ways scientists have never seen before. Why are earthquake magnitudes increasing every month? What is forcing the Earth upward at record speeds? And why can't anyone predict when this hidden giant might tear itself open? The Campi Flagre caldera sprawls across 13 kilometers west of Naples, an invisible crater hidden beneath apartment blocks, schools, and harbors. This is not Vesuvius, the famous cone that buried Pompeii. This is something far larger and far more dangerous. The caldera formed 39,000 years ago when a blast shot 72 cubic miles of molten rock into the sky, plunging global temperatures and burying Europe in ash. Today, more than 500,000 people live directly inside this ancient scar, unaware that the ground beneath them is anything but solid. But the volcano never stopped breathing. Since 2005, the Earth at Pozzuoli has risen nearly 1.5 meters, a slow, relentless push driven by forces no one fully understands. The National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology records every tremor, every millimeter of uplift. Giovanni Macedonio, the director overseeing the caldera, monitors screens that pulse with seismic data around the clock. A red phone on his desk connects directly to Rome's civil protection headquarters. It is tested twice each day. In June 2025, a magnitude 4.6 earthquake struck, the strongest ever recorded at Campi Flagre since monitoring began in 1970. Walls cracked, families fled into the streets. Tens of buildings were evacuated and remain empty. Just three months earlier, in March, a magnitude 4.4 quake had rattled the region. The pattern is unmistakable. Magnitudes are increasing. Scientists logged over 2,500 earthquakes in a single month last year. The volcano is accelerating. And the signs were already spreading. The phenomenon driving this unrest is called bradycism, from the Greek for slow earthquake. The ground swells and subsides in cycles that can last years or decades, as if the earth itself is inhaling and exhaling. At the old port in Pozzuoli, fishing boats now sit stranded in tall grass, marooned on land that was underwater just years ago. The Temple of Serapis, its columns decorated with mollusks that once lived beneath the waves, stands as a geological clock marking every rise and fall over the centuries. But this cycle feels different. The uplift since 2005 shows no sign of stopping. INGV data confirms the ground is rising at 20 millimeters per month in some areas, with cumulative uplift exceeding 1.46 meters at the caldera center. Advanced seismic networks have detected over 54,000 earthquakes in just the past three years alone, a staggering increase from the initially recorded 12,000 by standard monitoring. Artificial intelligence revealed thousands of microquakes that had gone unnoticed, hidden in the noise. What came next shocked even the scientists. Research published in 2025 identified a newly active fault structure cutting through the heart of the caldera. Analysis of earthquake clusters between 2019 and 2024 revealed that more than 50% of seismic events now concentrate along a single plane oriented southwest, dipping at 53 degrees. This fault is growing. Every tremor adds stress. Every quake brings the system closer to a critical threshold that researchers struggle to define. The debate over what drives this unrest divides the scientific community. For years, the prevailing theory held that magma was rising from deep chambers, forcing the ground upward. But new evidence challenges that assumption. A study from Stanford University published in Science Advances argues that the real culprit is water, not magma. According to this research, a capped geothermal reservoir beneath Pozzuoli is filling with pressurized fluids and steam. When the cap rock seals, pressure builds until the earth fractures, triggering swarms of earthquakes and bursts of land uplift. But the ground had one more secret. Laboratory experiments using seismic tomography and rock physics have revealed that the magma chamber may be far shallower than previously believed, possibly only 2 to 4 kilometers beneath the surface. 
If this is true, the margin between stability and eruption narrows dramatically. The shallow reservoir can transmit heat and gas upward with alarming speed, creating conditions where mag materials invade buildings, streets, and infrastructure without warning. At the Solfatara crater in Pichirelli, fumaroles now register temperatures of 128 degrees Celsius, the highest ever recorded. Carbon dioxide emissions have doubled since 2018, surging past 4,000 tons per day. The air near the vents carries a sharp metallic smell, sulfur thick enough to burn the lungs. Steam hisses from cracks in parking lots and sidewalks. New fumaroles open overnight, forcing emergency repairs that fail within days as the volcano punches through asphalt again and again. Inside abandoned apartment buildings near Pichirelli, every surface is encased in thick mineral crusts. Yellow and white deposits of sulfur, silica, and iron coat walls and floors fused by volcanic heat into alien landscapes. The air hangs heavy with acid vapor. Municipal records show families lived in these buildings as recently as 2016. Complaints began with strange warmth radiating through floors, then salt-like streaks along baseboards. By 2018, thermal cameras recorded floor temperatures approaching 50 degrees Celsius. Residents reported dizziness and burning sensations. Carbon dioxide levels in ground floor rooms measured 9,000 parts per million, far beyond safe limits. The buildings were declared uninhabitable. But this was only the first warning. On Via Antoniana, the Rossi family wakes each morning to check their living room walls for new mineral streaks. The outer wall radiates so much heat that plaster feels warm to the touch, even in winter. At night, they open windows to release the acidic air that seeps through cracks, then position fans near beds as far from the exterior walls as possible. Their youngest child sleeps with a fan pointed directly at him because the heat makes the room unbearable. If you put your hand on the wall, it burns, says Maria Rossi, her voice tight with worry. Last winter alone, the family spent over 6,000 euros on heat-resistant paint, makeshift ventilation, and repeated sealing of fissures that always reopen. Insurance companies refused to cover the damage, citing volcanic exclusion clauses. Property values have collapsed. Few buyers will risk a home in the shadow of Pichirelli. Some neighbors have left for good. Others, like the family's grandfather, insist on staying, watching steam curl up from the street each morning, checking if the paint has blistered again. Civil protection officials now face a crisis that outpaces their ability to respond. Several monitoring stations around the Solfatara crater went offline for weeks at a time in early 2024, victims of geothermal damage and budget shortfalls. During these blind periods, critical data gaps formed during rapid unrest. A municipal worker described the situation plainly. We can fix the machines, but not if the money runs out. Every extra week offline is a gamble and the signs were already spreading. On October 12, 2024, a swarm of shallow earthquakes struck Pozuwali, splitting the main artery of Via Napoli. Shops and schools shut down. Emergency crews cordoned off zones where gas leaked through new fissures. Workers patched the road only to watch new steaming vents burst through the asphalt by morning. A shop owner, still guarding his front door days later, said it was as if the earth decided repairs were pointless. This pattern plays out across the caldera. Fixes vanish overnight. Vents reappear wherever they please. In 2025, researchers using artificial intelligence mapped thousands of microquakes clustering along a newly identified ring fault that encircles the caldera. This structure could focus future earthquakes and amplify risk across the entire region. The limits of authority are stark. City budgets are drained, repairs are temporary, officials quietly admit they cannot stop the volcano, only manage it. What came next shocked even the scientists. The evacuation zone around Campi Flagrei, marked in red by Italian authorities, encompasses over half a million people. For everyone to survive a major eruption, this entire population would need to evacuate before pyroclastic flows, superheated to 800 degrees Celsius, sweep across terrain at speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour. The National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology warns that the volcano's explosive eruptive style could create an ash column rising 29 kilometers into the sky, collapsing roofs across the region, and halting air travel throughout Europe. Vesuvius, the more famous neighbor to the east, last erupted in 1944. 
Hans Christian Andersen once described its lava as colossal fallen stars, but it is Campi Flegrei, the invisible giant that poses the greater threat. Vesuvius is a cone volcano, predictable in shape and behavior, Campi Flegrei is a caldera, a collapsed crater where eruptions can break through anywhere across its 13-kilometer width with little warning and devastating consequences. But the ground had one more secret. In the 1970s and 1980s, tens of thousands of residents were forcibly relocated from Rioni Terra, the historic district of Pozzuoli. Authorities believed the sharp groundswell from Brady Sism signaled an imminent eruption. Police and military forced families from their homes, they were moved to new apartments, and the oldest quarter of the city was seized permanently by the state. Today, tourists wander the still-empty streets of this quaint hilltop district, its beautiful historic buildings standing mostly uninhabited, frozen monuments to a crisis that never culminated. The question remains whether that crisis was averted or merely postponed. Across Pozzuoli and the broader Campi Flegrei region, entire communities remain. Local artist Pina Testa describes a relationship between people and volcano that outsiders struggle to understand. She remembers childhood evacuations, neighbors gathering on the street in the middle of the night as earthquakes shook their homes. It was a time to chat, to connect, even to share pizza. The volcano has always been part of life here, she explains. The real residents of Pozzuoli live in harmony with the volcano. They can get scared sometimes, but never terrified. And the signs were already spreading. Current research reveals disagreement about what the monitoring data actually means. Some scientists, analyzing gas emissions and seismic patterns, argue that the unrest is driven primarily by pressurized water and steam pushing through fractures in the cap rock. This interpretation suggests that an eruption may not be imminent, as magma itself is not yet rising to shallow depths. Others point to new studies showing magma at only 2 to 4 kilometers depth, far closer than older models predicted. If magma is indeed this shallow, the risk of an eruption increases significantly. The uncertainty is deliberate and honest. Warner Marzici, a researcher involved in the expanded seismic analysis, states that current data suggests tremors result more from gases pushing superheated water upward than from magma ascent. Scientists hope this means an eruption is not necessarily imminent. But Marzici is clear. The risk of an eruption is still not zero, and vigilance is vital. Giovanni Macedonio echoes this caution. The two most recent earthquakes are the strongest we have ever seen, he told reporters. The volcano is behaving in ways it has not in centuries. Infrastructure is failing. Monitoring stations struggle to keep pace. The red phone to Rome is tested twice daily, a ritual that underscores the gravity of the situation. What came next shocked even the scientists. The caldera's last eruption occurred in 1538 when Monte Nuovo, a new hill, rose from farmland in just days. Parish records described darkness at noon, choking ash, and ground shaking so violently that homes split open. Crops failed across southern Italy for months afterwards. That eruption was relatively small by Campi Flagrei standards, yet it reshaped the landscape and terrorized the population. The caldera's largest eruption, 39,000 years ago, was a VEI-7 event, one of the most powerful in European history. It emptied the magma chamber so completely that the ground above collapsed, creating the caldera. Ash blanketed the Mediterranean. Global temperatures dropped. That eruption altered the course of human history, wiping out Neanderthal populations and forcing early humans to migrate. Experts agree an eruption of that scale is unlikely today, but even a smaller event, comparable to the 1538 eruption or the Neapolitan Yellow Tuff eruption 15,000 years ago, could wreak havoc. Millions of lives would be disrupted, infrastructure would collapse, air travel across Europe could halt for weeks, the economic and humanitarian costs would be staggering. But this was only the first warning. Advanced monitoring has not solved the fundamental problem. Scientists can track uplift, measure gas emissions, and map earthquake swarms with unprecedented precision. They can identify faults, model pressures, and simulate scenarios. But they cannot predict when or if the volcano will erupt. Brady seism has occurred many times over centuries without leading to an eruption. 
ground uplift can continue for years, then reverse, subsiding without incident, or it can culminate in catastrophic release. The pattern of increasing earthquake magnitudes, coupled with record uplift and extreme gas emissions, suggests the system is approaching a critical state. But critical does not mean imminent. The volcano could remain restless for years or decades, causing damage and displacement without ever erupting. Or it could transition to eruption suddenly, with insufficient warning to evacuate half a million people. What came next shocked even the scientists. Research published in Communications, Earth and Environment in 2025 analyzed the unprecedented magnitude 4.4 earthquake of May 2024, the largest recorded until the June 4.6 event. Seismic waveform analysis revealed that the quake was driven by the ascent of deep pressurized fluids, causing crustal failure and transient subsidence at the surface. The subsidence was so small, millimeters to submillimeters, that standard geodetic techniques could not detect it. Yet it occurred, a sign that the system is releasing pressure in complex, unpredictable ways. The study also found that rupture directivity and local geology controlled the distribution and severity of damage. This means that future earthquakes of similar or greater magnitude could cause even more damage, depending on where they strike and how energy propagates through fractured rock. Another study from the same journal identified the birth and growth of a volcanotectonic fault during the current unrest. Since 2023, seismicity has progressively clustered along this fault plane, concentrating more than 50% of events and most of the seismic energy released. The fault is active, it is growing, and it represents a structural weakness that could rupture catastrophically if stress continues to accumulate. And the signs were already spreading. In June 2024, the GFC Helmholtz Center for Geosciences in Germany installed nine advanced seismometers in the caldera to strengthen the local monitoring network. These instruments detect coupled earthquakes and resonance processes during uplift, phenomena that had gone unnoticed before. The lead author of the GFC study, Simone Seska, emphasizes that sophisticated data analysis techniques are essential to understanding complex geophysical processes. Only by pushing the limits of analytical capability can scientists improve understanding and more effectively mitigate risk. But sophisticated techniques cannot eliminate uncertainty. They can refine models, improve forecasts, and provide more detailed warnings. They cannot predict the exact moment a volcano will erupt or guarantee that an eruption will occur at all. The truth is that Campi Flegrei exists in a state of perpetual unrest, a liminal space between dormancy and disaster. The caldera has experienced at least 70 eruptions over the past 15,000 years, each one reshaping the landscape and altering human history. The most recent, in 1538, was a stark reminder that the system remains active. The question is not whether Campi Flegrei will erupt again, but when and how severe that eruption will be. But the ground had one more secret. Scientists know that the caldera is underlain by a shallow, gas-rich zone only two to four kilometers beneath the surface. They know that a capped geothermal reservoir is filling with pressurized water and steam. They know that earthquake magnitudes are increasing that ground uplift shows no sign of stopping, and that fumarol temperatures and gas emissions have reached record levels. They know that over half a million people live directly on top of this system in one of the most densely populated volcanic hazard zones on Earth. What they do not know is the full timeline. They do not know the ultimate extent of the unrest. They do not know if the system will transition to eruption or if it will subside again as it has in the past. They do not know how much more stress the caprock can withstand before it fails catastrophically. They do not know if the next earthquake will be magnitude 5 or 6, or if the ground will suddenly spit open without warning. The evidence is clear. Campi Flegrei is not dormant. The risks for surrounding communities are immediate and real. Magnitudes are increasing. The ground is rising. The volcano is awaking. But will it erupt? And if it does, will there be enough time to save everyone living in its shadow?